Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Meteorite or Meteor Wrong. I had to look at my screen because I forgot what we were doing. Sorry. It is May 15th, and we actually have a Patreon who submitted a, a rock submission to us. So we're going to take a look at the video. It's a three-minute video. Uh, then we have some pictures to go through, and the crew is going to hold their opinions and comments till after the video, and then we'll use the pictures to highlight what the crew wants to talk about. So let's get into it. Hello, Topher. This rock was originally 935 grams. It has no attraction to magnets, but it has a very prominent rollover rim. The rock is flat and has two distinct looking sides. This is, I consider this the back side. It's black and glassy and retains a lot of melted rock features. What I identify this rock as a space rock is the unmistakable rollover rim. I cannot imagine how an earth rock can develop this rollover feature. Its specific gravity is 2.83 gram per cubic centimeter. There is a thin, darker layer of possible fusion crust, approximately a half to a millimeter thick. And as you can see, there are no metal flecks or chondrules whatsoever. As well, there are no vesicles. Now, I've been told that it might be slate or a shale or even limestone, but that doesn't square with this uh, glassy fusion crust. The flip side has a somewhat smoother plain surface. And it looked like this is where it broke off from something larger. The color is lighter. And it doesn't have that black glassy crust. Now this rock is definitely not 99.9% .9 of the meteorites you've seen. So I think it's really easy to dismiss, but it's got some strange features that I hope you can have an open mind and debate on what it is. I look forward to hearing what y'all think. Thank you, Topher. Hey, thank you, man. I'll, I'll tell you right off the bat, one of the best narrative submissions we received. So right out of the gate, everyone, if you want to comment, please raise your hand right out of the gate terrific narration you're explaining things that you're seeing you're getting good 360 degree coverage of the entire rock i saw what i needed to see i saw everything in focus and well lit uh i'm really curious to hear what the crew has to say we have three hands up uh, i'm going to go to mr dave pinsky first okay there there is a lot of features that do look like uh, fusion across the, the rollover, but on that rollover, I don't see really any flow lines uh, that a lot of times you see on, uh, on rollover. And the backside really, to me, didn't look like a meteorite. Um, I, I honestly don't know what this would be. Uh, it does have melt uh, characteristics. But uh, that underside that uh, is just looks kind of suspect to me. Um, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that, though. But there's yeah. a few uh, issues I had. Okay. Thank you for your feedback. Uh, Allison. Yeah, uh, I agree that rollover lip doesn't quite look right. It looks way too big to me to be a rollover lip. Um, again, I could be wrong. The inside doesn't quite look right to me. 
uh, with no metal flakes and no metal chondrules, no, you know, breccia of any kind. I noticed some big holes. There's one that was is presented to us right there, front and center. Um, lots of meteorites that I'm aware of do not have those large vesicles or holes in them. And that just doesn't quite look like fusion crust to me. So those were the four issues that I had with that. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Chris, Chris Monk. Welcome to the show, buddy. Hey, thank you. So my initial thoughts looking at this is it's definitely something that's been melted. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of melt feature. I don't see that. If you go back a couple of slides, Topher, right, one more. Right there. Do you see how the upper layers of what he's calling the fusion crust kind of dip down in there and like fingers? Yep. I've never seen that on a meteorite. It's You're talking about this, this right here? Yes. And this right here? Mm -hmm. Oh, and also down in here. Yeah, I've never seen that on a meteorite. That looks like contaminants, not okay. something that was ablated. The other thing that just stands out, and, and Allison touched on it, is it's way too homogenous. If you look at the inside material, it is very similar color. It's very similar everything. There's no brecciation. There's no variance, which all almost even solid melts have some sort of difference in the texture and the color and the the, the mix up. It's just way too homogenous for me. You're talking you're talking about this yellowish cream area yeah. in here. Yes. If you look at that sliced edge in the video, it is mm -hmm. just almost like you were smelting something and you took a scoop off the top and you threw it out on the ground to dry. And it, it to me, is this is some sort of man-made industrial waste. All right. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate your input. Mr. Art Wagner. Yes, sir. Welcome. I, uh, I uh, looking at this as some sort of industrial slag. Uh, you know, it, it has a lot of characteristics uh, of, of heat and, and melt but the colors just don't look right. And when you look at the back side of it, I mean, I've seen a lot of slag and I mean, it fits, it fits the bill for industrial waste, mm -hmm. you okay. know? Uh, and, and Art, can I inter interrupt you for one second? Uh, we are trying to be as respectful as possible to okay. everyone and you are. You're calling stuff slag and industrial waste, but don't you also co personally collect samples like this, industrial oh, waste and slag? I absolutely yeah. do. I never miss an opportunity to collect a sample like that. Yes, thank you. So um, when we're calling it industrial waste or slag, that's not a derogatory term. It's an identification. It may be a correct identification may not be in this case i'm not saying i'm just saying people get bent out of shape when i refer to their stuff as industrial waste they think i'm insulting it and that's not what we're doing here as a community and that's not what we do at all to any submissions um last call for hands being raised pat after you sir okay so um on so on the that uh, picture that we're seeing right now, actually, both that last one and this one, there's kind of a pocket of stuff uh, right of center there. I'll, go, I'll stay on this one for you. Yeah, that doesn't really look right. Uh, the other thing is, you know, this thing has a metallic sort of luster. You know, it's like a black chrome sort of luster. And yet it's uh, not a metallic object because at 2.83 grams per cc, that's nickel iron meteorites are about seven grams per cc so it's also also he made comment that it's not magnetically attracted right Thank yeah you, zero Allison. attraction to the magnet um the the glossy sort of surface on it uh definitely does look like smelting slag and the the way we oftentimes uh 
describe that is as a blobby plastic sort of flow. And the feature that he called a rollover lip looks to me to be consistent with that that blobby um, uh, flow sort of look. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is he he talked about uh, fusion crust and real fusion crust does not have a gradation from the surface down to the interior. It's a very abrupt change from a you know a dark glassy fusion crust to the interior. Here, there really is no well-defined um, uh, transition there. So uh, yeah, I think this absolutely is not a meteorite. Hey, Bruce, over to you. Hopefully there's something left because I wanted to say something too. Well, I was going to say um, one of the things that for anybody submitting things is if, it, if there's a window, a full photo of the window area. Yes. This is only a part of it. So we're like, guess, you know, it's like we're seeing a small segment of it and I'd mm -hmm. rather see the whole thing. I'm looking at this part and, you know, I, I agree pretty much with it, what everybody else have been saying. But to me, you know, I also and not knowing, not having the feel of it in a way, this kind of reminds me a little bit of Libby and Devic Desert Glass. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, it, it's clear and, and you've got like small inclusions because it's like it's just the waste of whatever you know, quickly melting. Um, and if we, if you can go back to where the, one of the photos with the impact crater. Um, there you so, go. Yeah. So if you look to the left of the impact crater, there's a lot of linear lines there yeah. that just yeah. look man-made. They don't look natural, you know, yep. to see something that, that mm -hmm. together. Yeah. You know, so thank you, Bruce. I appreciate your feedback. And Pat, I do appreciate your feedback. <laughs> no worries. I do want to say this is a really good looking meteor wrong. It has a lot of very interesting features to it, but I think ultimately it's not right. Yeah, and and I think it's just like a case of Sherlock Holmes. You can't just look at one picture, one clue, one suspect and say they did it or they didn't know I know everything. There's little things we gleam on every single photo, every little bit of data, and the team really touched on it very well. So I thought the, the key things that it was not metallic, it was not magnetically responsive, although it looks metallic. Um, Chris, I think, said one thing that I really, really agree with, and it's on this photo right here. This, to, or I believe it was Chris said it. This to me, who, who said something about this? Oh little hole right here yeah I, I mentioned that yeah okay i think that is super telling because i'm looking at i agree with everything the crew has said and i appreciate everyone's feedback i agree it's not a meteorite as well for basically i agree with everything that was said but i'm trying to hypothesize what it is and when i i don't know about slag i don't know about industrial waste there's all kinds of industrial waste this is a non-metallic industrial waste because the, the specific gravity is too low for it to be an iron. It has no other appearances other than an iron from the outside, but the density is off, so it's wrong. Can't be. Uh, it's not metallic. It doesn't have a magnet. doesn't have chondrules. doesn't have a matrix. It doesn't have fusion crust. This, to me, looks like a rollover lip. I think it's a great ID. But what I think we're actually seeing, and this is a total hypothesis, imagine a smelter or something poured out. This right here is the actual where the pouring was done. The liquid metal or liquid substance, I guess, um, expanded, mushroomed up, cooled on this lower ridge, and this is where it was broken off from the bucket or whatever they poured it out of. That is yeah. my two cents, and we have three cents left with Chris Monk. <laughs> I I just wanted to say a, um, two things. One that I I agree that this is one of the best submissions that's done so far. He narrated it very well, gave very good pictures, and um, one of the things that I really appreciate that he did, and and I would offer to future submissions is that there is a cut surface, and this is the best example we've had in a while of why a cut surface is so important 
looking from the outside, if you look at this, it does have a lot of features that could be mm -hmm. considered meteorite like. Yeah, Chris, if I sent you this picture and said, look at my new iron, I would have you convinced and you know what I mean? Yep, totally. I 100% I, I get it. And when you see that cut surface, for me, that was just like an instant, yep, wrong. Yep, yep. Fantastic. Great feedback, Chris. I guess we have, you, you only took two cents. We have one cent left for Pat Brown before we sign <laughs> off. <laughs> Go for uh, it, so, Topher, I think what you were describing there can easily be called a splash form. And I okay. think that may be the the uh, reason behind the thing that looks like a rollover lip. Awesome. Well, there you have it. We try our best from a meteorite point of view to tell you if it's a meteorite, if so, what type. And if it is, what's the next step in getting it recognized by science? In a case like this, we, we always try to identify what it is. I think as a crew, we've identified it as some sort of non-metallic industrial waste splash form. Oh yeah, babes. Hey, if you guys have a odd rock and you want the crew to take it as seriously as you do, it costs $25 a month to support what we do here on Patreon at patreon.com slash Topher Spin. Boom. That's it. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Great job.